Well, the teams are out nice and early today, eight minutes before kickoff. 12.22 here at the EBB. And the shots and Wheelstone come out to a guard of honour. And a wonderful scene here at the EBB, as always, on Remembrance Weekend. Wheelstone in their away kit of yellow shirts, blue shorts and white socks with blue trim and Aldershot Town in their home kit, red and blue striped shirts, red shorts and red socks. And the two teams are exchanging handshakes now. The shots will line up as follows. Dewhurst in goal, Ellison, Maghoma and Bird. Across the back three, Ryan Jones, Hargreaves, Theo Windrington, uh, Windrington and Aaron Jones across the middle. And then Tyler Frost and Josh Barrett playing behind Jack Barham. Very strong bench for the shots as well today. S uh, seven on that, including top scorer James Henry, who scored a couple of goals in midweek in the National League Cup. And is there to be called upon, as is Hadi Gandor, despite taking a, a very heavy challenge in that game. Alongside me is Steve Gibbs, and uh, Steve, just be prepared to pause at any given moment because of the rem of remembrance course. proceedings, but uh, um, always a wonderful occasion. Let's talk about the occasion. We'll come on to the teams in a bit. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's Aldershot Town is known around the world as the home of the British Army, and it's one of the things that this football club gets right every single year. And it, it is something that people turn up for, regardless of the game. It is something that people turn up for and, yeah, it's always absolutely impeccable. A lot of people coming in late as well. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your attention. At 11 a.m. on the 11th of November, some 106 years ago, silence fell on the battlefields of Europe. Before our match this afternoon, we will take a moment to remember with sorrow and gratitude all those who gave their lives or were seriously injured in two world wars and other conflicts past and present, not least today in Ukraine and Israel and Gaza. And we pray that silence may fall on those battlefields too. We give thanks also for those in our armed forces today who serve to protect our freedoms. It is a great pleasure to have with us 16-year-old trumpeter Ben Hallett of Gordon School, who will both begin and conclude our one-minute silence. And now representatives of both clubs, the garrison and the local community will now lay wreaths. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them.
When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. Always such an emo a such a moving occasion, listeners. I hope you felt it at home, wherever you're listening to that, around the country and around the world. We will remember them, Steve. Absolutely, we shall. As the banner says, all the shot remembers, lest we forget in front of the East Bank. A complete club effort, a team effort. And yeah, perfect as usual. Okay, on to uh, matters of football, which always seems so incredibly insignificant after that, but let's get to it anyway. Um, Aldershot, how do you want your changes, listeners? I'm going to give you the changes from the last league game, um, which is ridiculous, really, because it was two weeks ago. Um, and it's uh, five changes from the last league game. Uh, a similar looking uh, front three to that which took on Bradford City in the FA Cup last week. All the shot line up as follows Marcus Dewhurst in goal, uh, Dan Ellison, Christian Maghoma, and Lucky Bird, the back three. Ryan Jones and Aaron Jones, your wing backs today, left and right respectively. Cameron Hargreaves and Thea Widrington in the centre of midfield. And then Tyler Frost and Josh Barrett supporting Jack Barham in attack. An attack which, by all accounts, Steve, last Saturday in the FA Cup at Bradford, looked really quite potent for the first half in particular. Yeah, I think we've spoken before, before going on air about the lack of James Henry, but his potency from the bench could, could be crucial this afternoon. But, yeah, I think Tyler Frost's box-to-box -box energy, the creativity and the ability to find space of Josh Barrett, and then the hard work of Josh um, of Jack Barham against this three-man Wildstone defence, which will leave spaces, which will be spread. Jack Cook, the right-sided centre-back, will play as a centre-back, a full-back, and a, and a central midfielder. There will be opportunities for Barham's hard running and hard work to exploit. Excellent stuff. Right, we're ready for kickoff here. Elliot Swallow is going to get us underway. Five games this year and one or two different leagues. 29 yellows and no reds in those five competitive games he's refereed. Wheelstone get us underway. They're full uh, starting 11 to follow very shortly. Uh, and they're kicking towards the East Bank in the first half. Cameron Hargreaves quickly onto the scene. Gets the ball, clips it forward. Good header from Woodman. Finds Giorgio, who goes back to Jack Wells Morrison, the young 20-year-old on loan from Crystal Palace. He's uh, lining up initially against uh, Cameron Hargreaves in the uh, centre of midfield. So, Wildstone also in a 3-4-2-1. Howes in goal, back on loan. The former Wildstone goalkeeper, of course, um, got a move to a higher level. Now he's here on loan as Jack Cook puts the ball into touch. He's playing... Uh, on the right side of the three centre-backs, Adrian Mariapa, a familiar name, having uh, played, I believe, at the top level for Watford. And Dion Woodman are the three centre-backs. Giorgio, Wells, Morrison, Cissé and Baldwin are the four across midfield as Maghoma drifts onto a loose ball and puts it into touch in front of Steve and I. And then Sam Ashford, five goals this season. Max Kretschmar, just one in the FA Cup and uh, Alex Reid wow what a signing everybody said Wheelstone are not far off it they just need someone to put the ball in the net and guess so what four games ago he turned up didn't he yeah. seven goals later in all competitions absolutely and him and Ashford are building a really dangerous partnership they've won one drawn one of their last couple of games their position may be somewhat false I still think they're far too open at the back and concede too many goals but Ultra Town need to win this game and they need to win it convincingly but Wildstone will not be a pushover by any means absolutely not we'll talk a little bit about both sides form as and when but uh, for the moment 
Maghoma clears it forward. Jack Cook will win that in the air and head it comfortably into the path of Woodman, who's uh, perhaps the tallest of all the players, and they certainly have uh, a good half a dozen tall ones. Theo Widgerton brings down Max Kretschmar just inside the order shot down half. And he's shouting into the ear of referee Elliot Swallow. <laughs> I, I don't know why, because it was a clear foul, Steve. It was, it was a, a rather overzealous shoulder charge. I think he gave Kretschmar the opportunity to go down. And Kretschmar took that opportunity with both hands. But, yeah, Theo does not have any scope for arguing with refs. Kretschmar with the ball in, headed away by Maghoma. Only as far as Boldwine. Jack Barham's wrestled the ball though and Aaron Jones has got it. Down the line to Josh Barrett. Finds Hargreaves. Hargreaves for the first time ball towards Jack Barham. And the goalkeeper heads it clear. Barrett can't keep it in, but it had already gone out. If he'd kept it in, the goal net, the goal would have been gaping a la home game three or four games ago. I that's what he'd have been thinking. He'd have been thinking that already and uh, he landed that one on the roof of the bar, didn't he? But uh, high tempo start from the shots not having it their own way by all means in the first three and a half minutes but uh, certainly looking up for it today and uh, fair to say they and in fact both of these sides Steve desperately desperately want a win today I mean do they need it probably that's a bit unfair at this stage of the season but my goodness me they're desperate for it ball forward looking for Barham and that's going to be shepherded out might have to be dealt with actually by Mariapa because well done Jack Barham he didn't have enough pace to drift behind the goal Barham presented himself and in the end managed to play the ball off of Mariapa and it's behind for a, a corner and good to see the shot Steve winning a corner that probably shouldn't have been because I seem to find myself commentating on so many moments the other way where teams get corners when yeah. they shouldn't yeah no that was superb from Jack he had no right to win it but he knew that he didn't have to win the ball first he just needed to stop Wildstone clearing their lines and he did that brilliantly and that typifies the shot's hungry start OK Jack I beg your pardon Josh Barrett is going to take it right footed in swinger to the far post Jack Cook's favourite to get on that and he does and then it's hooked away by the number 21 Callum Cisse who's a Sierra, Sierra Leone international if I can say it another one of the taller players in the Wildstone team in fact really Mariapa probably is arguably the smallest in the centre of defence yeah between those two towering Howes and Wells Morrison he looks even shorter than he is yeah I guess if you've got two guys of that size you can afford to throwing comes in from Jones headed on by a Wildstone player and cleared away I think Maghoma may have been involved in an infringement with Mariapa as well the two centre backs surnames both beginning with M A both been sent off this season as well and uh, that might be where the um, comparisons end Steve but uh, yeah they've, they've both had a, a moment of red miss this season yeah both both combative players and I'm not quite sure where that free kick came from Tommy Widrington just turned to his bench with his arms outstretched looking slightly aggrieved there was so much going on in that box I'm not quite sure how the referee managed to pinpoint one decision great header from Lackey Bird but headed back away again by Dion Woodman only as far as Tyler Frost is quite deep as he receives it and feeds Ryan Jones on the left could this be his time Ryan Jones he's done it in a couple of games he's done it in the National League Cup oh, that's a, a very strong back pass Dewhurst is there and does really well to get to it and clear it forward and Steve we haven't mentioned it yet we're only six minutes in and if you've got a bingo card at home we're going to mention it now Marcus Dewhurst is playing against his old side today he is yes yeah he was absolutely superb representing Wildstone last season and I think that's probably where one of the one of the main reasons why Tommy targeted him as a new goalkeeper this season the impressive performances that he gave maybe similar circumstances where he was left exposed by that Wildstone defence far too often but impressively he came out on top he did and there's so many comparisons between these two teams you might not want to hear them shots fans with Wildstone you know they're, they're a hybrid club these days I understand they're not quite fully part-time or fully full-time but both sides have only won one game in the last ten both sides have picked up seven points from their last eight and both have conceded 25 goals this season so there really isn't much between them will there be today 
Ellison does well in a tight spot, plays the ball off a Wheelstone player, it's into touch, shots have a throw halfway inside their own half. It rare, that, rare that it happens, Steve, but I've just missed back-to-back all the shot games. I didn't go to Bradford, had a family occasion on, and uh, mm. uh, I was uh, I was very fortunate and honoured to make my debut commentating on a league, uh, a football league game, EFL League One. Uh, Burton nil, Crawley nil at the weekend. Um, I have to say the standard didn't look much better than National <laughs> League to me in that one. The sides third bottom and bottom in League One, but delight to be back at the EBB yeah. today. Um, and this is an occasion that I would never miss if I could humanly possibly get here. Right, here's... the game lives up to it. I hope it does. A lot of emotion out there early on as the game kicked off. There's a ball forward. That's too strong going forward for Sam Ashford. But he holds his hand up and a thumbs up to uh, at least applaud the idea pass that I think came from Baldwin. All the shot player out short from Dewhurst to Mag Homer. No doubt that uh, Wilson are going to try and press that back three. They've actually pressed in midfield and won it back here off of Ryan Jones. And then Jack Cook lifts the ball over the top. Ellison wins it in the air. And uh, Jones jumps a little bit late, a little bit awkwardly perhaps uh, with Baldwin. I think it might have been a Wheelstone free kick. Referee didn't give anything on this occasion and Wheelstone keep possession. They're now playing it around their own back three just inside the Aldershot town half. There's Josh Barrett chasing down. Well, Hargreave, Hargreaves won it eventually uh, and then the ball ran loose and now Wheelstone have got it again and they've played it back to Mariapa. We're nine minutes in here at the EBB and it's still goalless at the minute and I've still ma to make a note on my... Uh, on my pad in terms of a goal bound effort at either end it's a, a dry afternoon but there's a little bit of a damp atmosphere I saw a few spits and spots on my car journey here it's not due to rain this afternoon pretty cold and fresh eight nine degrees perhaps one of the first times at a daytime game that it's dipped below double figures and um, yeah certainly wouldn't call it a cold snap but uh, Winter's most definitely on its way. Definitely, Steve. yeah. You can tell by the leaves, as if you needed any more reminder that this is very much autumn. Lovely play off balance from Frost to flick the ball into the path of Ryan Jones, and then he tries to get the cross in, and it comes off the back heel, I think, of Jack Cook, who just turned his back away from it and goes into touch. Really difficult take for Frost, but he had good awareness of who was outside him in Ryan Jones. By all accounts, had a terrific game last week, bursting full of energy. Tyler Frost had a huge chance to put Aldershot back 2-1 up, oh, didn't he, uh, after Bradford had equalised. And uh, it didn't happen. It was a big moment that came and went. And, uh, you know, from one or two accounts of the game, depending on what angle you saw it, it was a bad miss or it was a difficult chance. I think from the, from the TV gantry, it looked like one of those, you think, as he goes around the goalkeeper, he has to score. But then the touch just took him wide and the angle was maybe a little bit prohibitive. Exactly what happened to Josh Barrett here a few weeks ago. Is Barrett on the ball? Is he going to send in a ball? He's reluctant to. He keeps possession into the 11th minute or halfway through it. Hargreaves turning out to drift onto a ball on the right side. No ball onto Bird. Plays it down the line, or Widrington does, looking for Hargreaves. But uh, not quite in tune with each other there. But the idea again was good. 11 minutes gone nil nil Steve Gibbs yeah that was only half a yard a little bit just so fractions again but an excellent idea from Theo you can see he just opened his body and stroked that ball into that inside right channel and Cameron was so very nearly on it and then if he had managed to bring it under control all shot down were in I mentioned for the Wealdstone manager a very familiar face Steve Matty Taylor also played at the top level of the game and trying very hard to hold on to a job at this level of the game. He is, yes. Yeah, I think it's always difficult circumstances when when this league gets more competitive. Backward header from Frost and he Kretschmar's in. Ellison came across like he was having a stroll in his back garden and just lifted the ball behind for a corner. When Kretschmar, perhaps if he'd been the Kretschmar, the double figures Kretschmar that we've seen at Woking and the goal, guy who got eight goals last season 
might have done better there, Steve. Yeah, it's excellent defending from Ellison, that's the bottom line, but he did seem to hesitate momentarily, and that proved fatal. Yeah, maybe if it had been Reed, if it had been Ashford, all shot town would be one down. Corner then to Wildstone. In the 13th minute, goalless at the moment in this Remembrance Day or Remembrance Weekend game. It's going to be Anthony Georgiou who takes it. It's going to be a left-footed out swinger. Cooks up, gets his header on it, headed clear and then booted clear by Tyler Frost. But uh, it was a goal-bound effort on target. Here's a poor header and Jack Barham's onto this. It runs out of play. He wants to take the throw quickly and he does. Hargreaves the first to show. He's always there. And Aldershot doing well there. But Jack Cook with... Uh, well, two half chances in a minute for the Stones. Ellison doing well on both occasions. Here's Frost with the ball in. Oh, lovely ball into the penalty area. Just got away from Barrett. I think he might have checked his stride to make sure he was on side. And by the time he lost that tiny bit of momentum, Steve, yeah. the ball went to fizzing past him, much to Jack Cook's relief, and through to the goalkeeper, Sam Howes. Yeah, but excellent idea. And there's been a couple of times in the last couple of minutes with Widrington's pass and then Jones's pass Ultshot Town showing signs that they know how to exploit the gaps and get in behind this Wildstone defence Shots have got the ball back playing the ball down the right side little shove in the back from Barham on Woodman who shows good composure oh he's giving it away to Barham Barham squares it across to Barrett can he get it under control plays it into the path of Frost it's so unlucky it was all done at pace it's cleared away very, very good hunting and Tommy Whittington isn't happy whether he thinks somewhere in that the wrong ball was played, I don't know. I thought Barham was quick thinking, his lucky bird making good ground. Send it up to Aaron Jones on the right side, cross comes in from him. Barham can't get on it but uh, he can only flick ahead of backwards. Ryan Jones retrieves it over on the left side. He's up against Boldwine now, he looks to take him on. He's gone past him, gets the ball in, tries to, it's cut out by Boldwine behind for another corner to the shots their second of the game and Willstone have had one as well uh, if I'm you tallying them as well it's a 2-1 isn't it yeah uh, corners yes 2-1 to yeah, all the shot so uh, in the 15th minute goalless uh, intriguing game nice play being played at a good pace from both teams in comes the corner from Josh Barra again Jack Cook's on it follow up shot from Hargreaves is a good one and it was on target through a plethora of bodies though one of which <coughs> excuse me Steve diverted it away yeah that, that's one good thing that Wildstone one thing that Wildstone are good at and that's blocking shots they get bodies in front of the ball put their bodies on the line and stop the shots before they get through to the goalkeeper okay throw in then to the shots and uh, Ryan Jones is coming over to take a, a lengthy one from this right hand side almost level with the uh, edge of the penalty area up he steps in comes the ball will it be Cook again no it's Woodman headed back in from Hargreaves Ellison's up Frost almost there tries to get his shot away so difficult to keep it down it was always rising and it drifts wide but I'm going to say Steve 15 16 minutes in nil nil but encouraging signs for the shots so far today definitely yeah both of those opportunities the one uh, we, where, where Jack Barham won the ball out out near the touchline. I'm not sure what Tommy was what Tommy was aggrieved by there. I think Jack did well to play the ball into Barrett in the D of the penalty area, and then a little flick, and Frost was just crowded out. And again, he was crowded out there just as he wanted a, a little bit of space to hit a clean shot. He was given a little nudge in the back, but promising signs from all the shot, and they're starting to. Shove in the back of Ellison, free kick to shots just inside their own half. And just to say that when Barham fizzed it into Barrett, Barrett's preference was to have turned it towards goal and then shot, but his touch didn't go quite right. And then with some very quick thinking, he managed to clear it. Here's Reed shutting down uh, Dewhurst, who does well to clear the ball away, but then Barrett wrestles it off Baldwin. Ryan Jones has won it, sends it inside to Theo Widrington. He'll play it now into the path of uh, Aaron Jones. Tried to just do it a bit more tempo and miss out uh, Lachlan Bird, who's, who's now 
receiving the ball. There's one other game in the National League with a 12.30 kickoff today. I think they're both on zone. Some sort of celebration of them going live on their own platform, but I had a look this morning. It's the same thing. It's the National League platform on their website now. Um, and it's York City 1, Hartlepool 0, Oli Pierce. That might be double figures for him. Here's Ryan Jones making great ground down, around down the left to trace what looked like an otherwise lost cause. And again, he plays it off of Woodman and wins another corner for shots, the third. They're showing that little bit of extra desire. And meanwhile, the Wheelstone goalkeeper, Sam Howes, is down. And in some uh, discomfort, requires treatment, Steve. I don't see what happened there, whether he ran out of his area or just tripped over or what I'm happened. I'm not sure. There was certainly no... no all shot town player around him I don't know if it's a he's felt a tweak earlier in the game and now it's and now it's worse and Tommy seems to seems to think that he's coming off yeah well Jacob Adams the number 13 is the Wealdstone reserve goalkeeper and I don't know if you've got any notes on him already I, my, my in-depth analysis didn't go down that far shame on me yeah and he's not a player that I'm familiar with they, so he's they've got three three goalkeepers Howes Matthews and Adams I don't think Adams has played enough to to feature in any real rankings, but his shot stopping is impressive. I think he he has prevented the fifth most goals of all goalkeepers in the National League. The official stats suggest that he's the fifth best at preventing goals. So you think if he does have to come on, maybe he hasn't got much experience or much game time under his belt, but as a shot stopper he's not he's not too too not, much of a downgrade not too shabby I mean Marcus Dewhurst is of course wonderful at that I think he is rated as one of the best stop shotters yeah. or even shot stoppers <laughs> that's Jordi Van Stappershoff's fault <laughs> for having a name that's getting my words mixed up we wish Jordi well by the way I think he came off with an injury and I can see him uh, away to my left in the stand uh, dressed today very smartly with his blazer and poppy on yeah. um, so we wish him a speedy recovery and we're rather astounded at the recovery of of uh, of uh, Hadi Gandor Hadi Gandor um, just looking at him not, because obviously it was a leg injury that he sustained but he must have had a head injury as well because his head strapped up there, there were a number of challenges that he was uh, subjected to by the Brighton under 21s and yeah there was a leg injury he is wearing a the Terry Butcher patented headband if anyone's old enough to get that reference and yeah but he is you know that if he if he can walk if he's got one leg and half a head he will give 100% for all shot down Steve I've got a gut feeling I'm going to have to share it um, both sides have got seven goals in their starting lineups, and uh, for the for all the shot, Barham, Barrett, Frost, Ryan Jones, and Aaron Jones have all scored this season. None of the three centre backs have Ellison, McHomer, and Bird, and they've all come close on at least one or more occasions. I have a really strong gut feeling that one of them is going to score today. I don't know why. I don't know where it's come from, and you can laugh at me later if I'm horribly wrong. But uh, no, I, th I think you're right. They are due. Ellison's had at least three headed chances yeah. for all the shots since he's been here. Mac Homer has rattled the crossbar at Yeovil. I think he went close at Bradford last week, if I remember correctly. Um, it is the first substitution of the game for Wealdstone. And uh, it is Jacob Adams, the number 13, coming on to replace Sam House. Yeah, very disconsolately. He's very slowly he's walking around the touchline soon to pass us in front of the press box in the north stand Howes looks an absolutely dejected figure but the game is restarting in comes the corner headed away might well have been Cook again you know he's a ball magnet like your Callum Reynolds and one or two others he's on everything yeah. bit of a cult hero at Wealdstone as well there's uh, Lachlan Bird getting up and winning the ball Ellison heads it to his left where Frost picks it up on 10 yards outside the area gives the ball to Lackey Bird he, he'll give it back to Frost Frost with the ball into Barrett gets it back his touch has taken him wide but he sends in another ball Barham's trying to take it down he's uh, trying to get it under control it, it bounces up and hits him and then the follow up shot goes into the net after the whistle's gone Murphy's Law as they say oh that's a really nice touch from Sam Howes as um, 
Maddox, isn't it? Maddox Gregory, Kirsty's son, who's a big Aldershot Town fan, had the cheek to shout out, "Can I have your gloves, mate?" And he did. Another one. I don't. Well, I don't. Sam, Sam's not going to need them for a while. Do you know what? I don't know. Unkind. I don't know about Paul Blundell's Aldershot Town Museum and Football Museum, but I think Maddox is going to have to open his own museum as well, isn't he? Uh, here's Aaron Jones clearing the ball off of a Wheelstone player and then it comes down it's headed into touch by Jack Wells Morrison and it will be a throw in to Aldershot and we are halfway through the first half Steve goalless couple of half chances for either side nobody really dominated but a good watch it is absolutely yeah it's Aldershot Town have started lively Wheelstone as well showing enough impetus and as you'd expect a little bit of confidence gained by their results in the last few last couple of weeks but I think it's not a happy a happy ground for Sam Howes I seem to remember in his brief spell at Woking a few years ago he he went off injured in a in a derby game here quite early on in the game as well so a bit of unfortunate deja vu for Mr Howes I forgot that he was ex-Woking as well so that means Kretschmar Cook and Howes yep. started today all ex-Woking always gives the game a little bit more of a fizz that's for sure but we can't quite get any momentum here going uh, today we've had uh, the treatment to Howes and uh, now we're waiting for Kretschmar or Kretschmar rather is going to have to wait 30 seconds to get back on Bird sends the throw in down the line Wells Morrison heads it forward and then Ellison is a judge to have fouled Alex Reed. quite a story really him being on loan from Oldham because he is quite highly rated there but sadly he tweeted last Christmas uh, something very negative about the players being called in for training on Christmas Day yeah. and it did not go down very well at Oldham and he's right. fallen out with the management since um, and uh, obviously still contracted but uh, he's enjoying his time at Wildstone, that's for sure. Seven goals in his first four games, most of them in cup competitions, two in the league. We're in the 25th minute here, and Georgiou is going to send in this free kick from the left-hand side. The referee's coming up over to have a word with Mag Homer and Cook, who are pushing everything close to the line, let's say. In comes the ball. It's taken under control and sent into the area by the number 20 Ashford all the shot come away with it but Barham can't keep it Georgiou uh, exchanges passes with Wells Morrison that's a, a heavy touch Barham's almost onto it Lachlan Bird will win the header and then a ball inside which Frost should get to first and he can send it into the path of Ryan Jones can he skip inside or pass the man he skips across diagonally on his left foot and can't quite get back out into space Lackey Bird finds that space over on the left sends it over to Mag Homer Mag Homer back to Frost but Wildstone pressing well out of possession ball around the corner from Frost looking for a run from either Barrett or Barham both of them were split wide and it went straight through the middle and all the way back to the incoming Wildstone keeper wearing the same all orange kit as Howes before him Jacob Adams it wasn't a bad pass no from Frost if Barham had been scampering onto it, you'd think, well, that's brilliant vision, but unfortunately the strikers were not on the same wavelength. And that's really the, the biggest reason, I think, why neither of these teams have scored so far. and not quite got the cohesion of passing in the final third that they've got when they're just knocking it around the back three or the middle. There's a ball out to the right for Wildstone, one in the air by Jones, but he can only head it down to Boldvine. And um, as uh, Ashford tried to make... No, it wasn't Ashford, actually. Another Wheelstone player tried to make progress down the right-hand side. Maghoma got there first and pushed it into touch. It was Ashford, I beg your pardon. And uh, here is Woodman in possession. Feeds it to Kretschmar. Kretschmar back to Cissé. And now Wheelstone enjoying a good chunk of uh, possession. Possession in modern day football is a moot point stat for me. I'll give you a really good example. 
as Wildstone go all the way back to the keeper. In League One, Crawley have the highest possession stats, Burton the fourth highest, and they're bottom and third bottom in the division. Here, Widgerton wins the ball, but he's nibbled a bit of man as well as the ball, so he's given a free kick away. And Widrington not happy again, th um, Tommy. But I don't know if that's with his players or the referee on that occasion. Could you tell what he said, Steve? No, I couldn't. I think it was perhaps a little bit with Theo that it was an unnecessary foul and maybe he felt the ref referee was a little bit trigger happy. Is Jack Cook travelling across the halfway line and deep into the field shot half and then they come back all the way to the halfway line to Mariapa. George Hughes got it. He's going up against Aaron Jones and Cameron Hargreaves. Those two players that have worked together before, in fact, right across three of that midfield four have all played together at Kings Lynn, haven't they? Widrington, Hargreaves and Jones. Here's Mariapa skippering. No, he isn't skippering the side, is he? I beg your pardon. Free kick given to uh, Wildstone. about 15 yards outside the half and it doesn't actually say on the team sheet but I think he is a skipper in the side he's got uh, armbands on two different arms so yeah I'm not quite sure I, I suspect it leaves be him or Jack Cook but mm. uh, ah no it's oh yeah yeah there's some of them are wearing their their, their black armbands for Remembrance Day on yeah. uh, on different different uh, arms and sleeves and one or two of them got them underneath their sleeve I think anyway let's get back to the action 29 minutes very nearly gone Kretschmar lifts it in it's touched on appeals for something nothing given ball won by the head of Ryan Jones forward and then headed away by Dan Ellison back in from Goodman taken down on the chest by Jack Cook who finds Giorgio Giorgio to Boldwine and Wildstone really clicking up the possession here is Kretschmar plays it inside to Boldwine he's inside the penalty area comes back to Giorgio are they overplaying it? Are they overpassing it? Or can they find the key pass that breaks all the shot down? All the shot back in good numbers, leaving Barrett and Barham up front. There's a ball in, and it's prodded towards goal by Reed. Dewhurst scrambles it around the post, but the flag's up anyway for offside. It wouldn't have counted. But um, in terms of the way they build up and they try and play, I think Wildstone probably trying even harder than Aldershot to just sheerly pass it into the goal aren't they yeah yeah and I, sometimes you need to be a bit more direct as you said <laughs> possession stats mean nothing if you don't know what to do with it Aldershot have given it away in their own half and then a good recovery tackle from Maghoma who I think has played the ball off the Wildstone on rushing player and he has and uh, it'll be a throw in no he's changed his mind the referee he initially gave it to Aldershot now he's given it to Wildstone he's yeah. allowed he's I, I think him and the assistant had a bit of a difference of opinion and the assistant referee who's on the touchline probably held sway there Woodman with the throw down the line uh, kept in by Ashford played backwards Frost hooks it forward Cook wins it in the air but he can only head it into the path of Josh Barrett. Can Barrett find Barham? No, he can't. It comes back and now he sends it in again. Cook with a header again. Again into a good area. And then a poor header down. And Barrett can get onto it inside the penalty area. Oh, he's shot just behind the goal. Tight angle. Barham was in there. Jones was trying to make ground. So was Hargreaves. But his shot went behind the goal when probably really it needed to be dragged across the goal, Steve. And then that case, you know, if that had happened, it could have even hit a defender and gone in. Yeah, I think Jack was, Jack Barham was telling Josh Barrett, cross it, slide it hard, low, into that corridor of uncertainty in the six-yard box. And that's perfect for me. I can put the ball into the net, but Josh obviously felt he had the angle, he had the power to beat Adams but it's always easy to be wise after the event but yeah I think maybe Josh took the second of the best options there half an hour gone good headed winner from Lachlan Bird turned around the corner by Barham doesn't find its target though and Kretschmar will pick the ball up and Bold Ryan will come bursting over halfway plays it straight past Ryan Jones now he's looking to get past Ellison can he get his crossing yes he can but stretching for it was the number 20 Sam Ashford he couldn't get there shots um, 
breathe again for the moment and then Hargreaves can't hook it over his head to get it clear. It's been picked up by Giorgio. Wealdstone playing with the confidence they've built over the last few games. Ellison gets a vital header on it under pressure from Kretschmar and he's pushed in the back and he's won a free kick anyway. Referee given all to shot the free kick but he wants a word with Theo Widrington who's chirping away in his ear all the time, Steve. Yeah. He's treading a fine line. He is. Keep it quiet, Theo. There's n you've won the free kick. There is, Whether you've conceded a free kick or won a free kick, there is nothing to be gained by moaning at the referee. And I think there's the only going to be one winner. And I think the referee, Elliot Swallow, has been very patient to stand there and explain himself to Theo Widrington, who's now, as he runs alongside him, still getting in his ear. Theo, you've already had one suspension. We don't need it. Right. Dewhurst with the goal kick. Barham somehow beats Jack Cook in the air. How has he done that? How has he done that? And then Giorgio tries to send it down the line, but he slices it into touch. Hence the ironic cheers. You had to see that to believe it, listeners. Jack Barham beating Jack Cook in the air. Fantastic. Yeah, uh, about, there's about a foot in difference in height, at least. At least. Here's Frost keeping the ball in play. Feeds Hargreaves. Hargreaves back to Frost in a slightly more familiar position on the right side. Hargreaves takes it under control. Then he has a heavy touch. Cook, well positioned as always. He clears forward. Reed tries to get the flick header on. Ellison tries to chest it down but can't make good clear contact. And the counter-attack is on here for Wildstone. Boldwine twisting and turning edge of the penalty area. Gives it out to the right side of him. Oh, terrific, terrific defending. Ryan Jones take a bow, not only getting there, getting his foot onto it, but playing it off the Wildstone player. And it goes behind for an Aldershot town goal kick. Lots to be admired from these two teams defensively so far, Steve. It's, it's not the exciting kind of side of the game we all want to see crossbars being hit and goals fizzing in and rippling the net but defensively both sides have been good they have been yeah defense is very much on top there has been lots of endeavor from both sides but very much defense is on top i think dan ellison absolutely outstanding so far might well be one of those games where it's tight for a while and the goals goal or goals come late in the game and that makes me cast my mind to the shots bench where James Henry sits on there. Eight goals now for the season, two in the week, as Cook runs away from Barham and, and beats Barham at his game. Wonderful stuff, wonderful stuff. Here's Wheelstone in possession with Mariapa, crosses the halfway line, gives it to Giorgio. Giorgio up against Aaron Jones, not getting any change out of him, but Jones holds him and... Uh, it is a yellow card and I think it has to be it's it's quite cynical Giorgio is getting away from him yeah and uh, he got both holes around his tor both hands around his torso yeah, he knew exactly what he was doing yeah. it was yeah all together far too obvious and I take your point about late goals one third of Wealdstone's goals conceded have come after the 75th minute so if Altshot Town need to win this game keep going to the end yeah keep going to the end that's the message don't lose heart. 35 and a half minutes gone. Free kick to Wheelstone. In it comes from Kretschmar. Straight, too much curl on it. Straight into the grateful clutches of Marcus Dewhurst, who bowls it out now to Lackey Bird, who at least temporarily is the left of the three centre-backs. I think he's going to swap with Ellison again now. Here's Hargreaves motoring down the right side, giving the ball to Aaron Jones, who... Uh, He's holding off Georgiou, plays the ball down the line to Hargreaves. Jones, well, been on a yellow before, of course, and seen it turn into a red. Or was it a straight red, that one a few weeks ago? Uh, I'm trying to remember now. I think it was a straight. I think it was a straight red, wasn't it? Yeah. Here's the ball into Barrett. Hooks it forward, looking for Barham. Barham against Cook. Cook's there first. Hooks it forward, finds Georgia. Always seems to be on the ball. Cook always seems to divert it to a player of his own side and that's what makes me draw the comparisons although he's taller of course and more of a, a unit than, than Callum Reynolds but very very adept at winning it and steering it to a teammate in one go and yeah. uh, a, a tremendous centre back at this level one that often goes a little bit unrecognised for me yeah he's absolutely he, he excels in being in the right place at the right time 
and almost being a quarterback for this team as well in starting attacks from Port back. Yeah. Aldershot won that direct from Adams' goal kick. Maghoma headed it into the path of Ryan Jones and then he tried a ball. And again, not on the same wavelength. And it's funny because Aldershot can be very ho cohesive on attack at times. Um, and some days they are, some days they aren't. And on, uh, oh, back header from Maghoma. Dewhurst was out of his goal and it very nearly went straight past him. Dewhurst, very agile, great reflexes. There's a ball down the line. Cook slips and misses it on this one occasion. It's cleared forward by Wildstone and then Widrington can only head it into the path of Ashford who sends it forward towards Reed. He takes it under control, comes back onto his left foot, shoots low, very weak and saved by Dewhurst or picked up stooped down and picked up by Dewhurst more than a save but that's a matchup they won't want to see Reed getting through one on one like that no he did everything right until the shot did well to put Magoma on his backside by turning inside and then he just didn't catch the shot anywhere near as powerfully or as accurately as he'd have wanted and certainly that's one if Marcus Dewhurst was wearing a cap he could have thrown his cap on the ball you just don't want from an Aldershot Town point of view too many chances arriving at the feet or the head of Alex Reid today not in the form that he's in here's Wildstone flicking on the ball Ellison clears it up to Hargreaves Hargreaves down the line Cook's there the brick ball that he is he wins it again Hargreaves makes a genuine attempt to win the ball misses the ball and catches the number 25 Wells Morrison and Wildstone have got another free kick the third one of the game that Kretschmar is going to have the opportunity to just send it in from this inside left channel with Woodman up there, Cook up there and Reed up there. Big battle for the likes of Bird, Maghoma and Ellison again. The referee Elliot Swallow wants a word with the push in. Reed showing the referee his black armband that he's wearing for a remembrance weekend has been pulled down his arm and he pulls it back up again into the 40th minute Kretschmar sends it in headed away by Ellison only as far as Kretschmar who takes it under control feeds it out to the left to Giorgio Giorgio trying to get past Jones who's on that booking he's inside the penalty area can't get it in comes off the feet of Jones but comes back to him and Jones marking him closely another ball comes in and it goes all the way through to Dewhurst very little in this game. Dewhurst is going to throw it out to the left side for Frost who was switched on the afterburners and runs onto the throw. He's down on the left hand side cutting into the penalty area. He's into the penalty area. Pulls it back to Cameron Hargreaves. Tries the shot. It's deflected and Frost has kept it in. It would have been a corner but he goes back to Jones. Jones ball out of his feet. Sends the cross in. That's cut out. Corner to the shots. Really good play from shots on the transition. Bright as ever from Tyler Frost. Yeah, he's not maybe not got the creativity that you'd you'd expect from one of those two number tens, but he has got the drive, the energy to go box to box, and there he did really well and good vision as well to pull it back. Cameron Hargreaves, but Boldervine was just in the right place at the right time to block that shot at source. Another right-footed Josh Barrett corner. Jones is there if he wants to play it short, but he doesn't. He sends it in. Hargreaves gets his head on it, but it goes backwards to Bird, who keeps it in. Theo Widrington with the cross in the area. Good-headed winner by Mariapa there. He got up there like some of the taller players. Ball's kept in on the touchline by Barrett. He sends it in again. Headed out again by Mariapa. Frost onto it. Sends it across the area, but he can only find Ashford. Ellison's won the ball. Finds Theo Widrington. He sends it into the path of Josh Barrett. Barrett to Ryan Jones on the left-hand side. Shots building. Ball into Barrett. Inside the air. Shot. Oh, it's wide. Lovely ball in. First time take from Barrett. And you waited to see the net ripple, Stephen. It didn't. It was wide. Two or three yards, I think. Yeah, he didn't catch it quite as, quite as sweetly as he can. As we've already seen this season the likes of Halifax and Boston but good sustained pressure from Aldershot Town if they could get a goal now in the final few minutes of this first half it could be crucial it would give them impetus going into half time give Wildstone something else to think about they'll go into the break nil-nil feeling like they've they've achieved something here 
Wheelstone in possession, just inside their own half. Now Cook has burst forward. Lackey Birds won it, but Wheelstone have won it back with Reed. Reed finds Ashford. Ashford uh, thinks he's won a throw, but he hasn't. It's been given to Aldershot. 42 minutes gone. Shots nil, Wheelstone nil. You're listening to BBC Surrey Online or the BBC Sport app. National League football on Remembrance Weekend. Uh, shots in 17th of the minute against Wheelstone in the 22nd. It is nil-nil, but it's a much better nil-nil than the one I watched and called in the week. Here's a ball bouncing around. Maghoma takes control. Uh, Alex Reed's gone down. The assistant referee has flagged. And the referee's given a penalty to Wheelstone for the foul by Maghoma on Reed. Steve, your thoughts? Not Soft penalty. for me. Soft, Soft for me. Soft. Maybe you could say anywhere else on the pitch that's a foul, but I think even that's a stretch. I think Magoma did really well. It was two players using their strength, using their physicality to get to the ball. Magoma had won that, and for me, he'd won it fairly. Reed goes down, I think loses his balance more than anything. And well, Magoma's hands on him, but that goes on all the time, yeah, doesn't it? It's I don't think that's enough. Theo Widrington's just high five Marcus Dewhurst. Now, he would have normally faced Kretschmar in the past, who he would have faced many penalties against, but Alex Reed's the man right now. Yeah. He's won the penalty. He's the man who's scored seven goals in his last four games. Theo Widrington's finally been shown yellow, and I think we know what that's for. Alex Reed's descent. Uh, Alex Reed against Dewhurst. Reed steps up and buries it high into the net. Dewhurst goes away to his right. And the referee confirms the goal. And uh, some 250 or 300 Wheelstone fans over on the far side punch the air with delight, clap their hands, greet their favourites because they've taken the lead here. In the 45th minute, shots nil, Wildstone one. Excellent penalty from Reed. High, down the middle. I think probably waited for Dewhurst to commit himself. But still, for me, not a penalty. Yeah, I've got to agree. It's, you see pushes and challenges so often, so often, and they don't get given. But it's the assistant referee who flagged. The referee, for me, was nearer the incident but didn't give it and that's quite no, telling and, and the, but the assistant referee had a different angle of it the players were running towards him they were running across the penalty area so maybe he felt that Magoma's physicality the way he maybe closed Reed off was was worthy of a foul his lucky bird sending the ball forward Barham heads it on but Mariap is back there and this game was tight, was tense, was close, but you have to say, oh, there's a lovely take from Ashford. Uh, you have to say it's gone exactly how Wildstone will want it to go. Clean sheet for them, coming up to halfway, uh, half time, sorry, and they've uh, and they've now taken the lead as Ellison goes back to Dewhurst. He's not going to keep a clean sheet against his old side. Barham jumps early against Cook, but Cook wins it. Theo Winton with a good ball into the path of Tyler Frost. Frost feeds. Ryan Jones who gives it straight back to him then the back heel down the line to Jones Frost comes in, Barham can't get up Mariap is there and then it's hooked clear by Kretschmar what a great defender he is position wise Mariapa, he'd have to be wouldn't he to make up for the lack of height bit of an understatement I guess Yeah, when, when you've got the, the height of Cook and Wells Morrison he's almost that, that old sweeper that libero kind of position and with his experience, with his quality on the ball He's that spare man that can position himself and sense danger and snuff it out almost before it happens. And yeah, I think that three-man def Wheelstone defence has been excellent this afternoon. It is this afternoon. You're right, technically. Um, it does feel like morning. It I was agree. even technically afternoon when we kicked off, but I'm one of those. It's not afternoon till after one for me, but technically it's after twelve. So twelve thirty well, kickoff. It's, it's even after but one. It's even afternoon by your criteria. It's now one nineteen p.m. So. Exactly. 
Ball down the left, Frost to chase, and uh, he's uh, won the foot race against Cisse. And now he's getting the ball back from Barrett, sends in a deep cross. Aaron Jones heads it across Carl. He does so well to get on it and to get above Giorgio. I think he thought maybe he was too far out to head it on target, so he headed it across goal, but there was nobody coming in on the far side. Great effort there, Aaron Jones. Yeah, just to get there, just to win that ball, he did superbly well. I'm going to put that down as a as an effort off target. I'm not sure whether mm. he was trying to find a teammate or... Well, there wasn't anybody there. Goal but, uh, or, he may yeah, not have known that. Just yeah. trying to get something on the ball and hope that, hope that something happened, but yeah, what my notes do tell me... All Shot Town have not had a shot on target in this first half and for all of their endeavour that's not good enough. Well I think sh I think Hargreaves shot was, was blocked I think that was on target so maybe it I'd may say It have been goal yeah. bound but yeah. I think where it's blocked before it reaches doesn't the always count. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for me that doesn't count as a shot on target Free kick to Aldershot just inside their own half Aldershot on the end of a cheap decision for them Big controversial moment though at the other end and uh, in consultation with his assistant referee Elliot Swallow gave the penalty to Wildstone. Alex Reid who won it, earned it, whatever you want to call it, uh, tucked it away. Eight goals in five games for him <coughs> um, and uh, Wildstone have proven that uh, they can go long into games they can they can it can be quite tight and, and a goal scorer just makes all the difference but uh, of course 12 yards out with only the goalkeeper to beat you've got a great chance can all the shot muster something we've got five added I don't think I mentioned it maybe Steve did no, and I we didn't. are already three minutes 50 seconds into it apologies listeners for not mentioning that before into the last uh, minute now Lucky Bird pokes the ball out to the right side to Hargreaves Hargreaves trying to shake off his man which is Ashford at the moment and he can't Widrington sends it forward Mariapa with the header so good with these headers at finding their men oh Frost is limping um, and uh, I think he's okay oh poor touch from Lucky Bird but he does well to win it but he can and then he wins it a second time but Wilston have got it and they've got the men going forward Kretschmar tries a shot from distance and it's ended up where I'm presuming most of his other shots this season have wide. Uh, Alex Reid can only stare at him forlornly, wondering why he didn't pass it to him. Yeah, it opened up invitingly for him, but certainly maybe they were, maybe there were better options. He's he's got three assists this season, Max Kretschmar, but and maybe that's more his game now. Ten but seconds of added time left. All the shot on the attack. Maghoma to Jones to Barrett, and then Barrett turns it around the corner and it's picked off rather too easily by um, Boldvine and now Cissé picks it up and Lutz spreads a lovely ball out to the right hand side Kretschmar's jogging along and eventually making his way into the penalty area Reed's got it back to goal edge of the area feeds Cissé referee blows his whistle 14 seconds after the added five minutes and uh, well whether he'll have the benefit of a replay at half time or whether he'll even care I don't know but I'm sure there's going to be a few people looking at that one back because a controversial 43rd minute penalty for Wealdstone is what separates the sides Alex Reid tucking it away here with his thoughts on the first half at the EBB is Steve Gibbs well for 43 minutes there was very little in the game both in terms of it being very even and there being very little of note but then that one decision, Christian Magoma for me, being strong in winning the ball, shoulder to shoulder against Alex Reid. The referee and his assistant have judged that to be a foul and then Reid has scored an excellent penalty. It probably should be nil-nil, but aside from feeling aggrieved maybe at the award of the penalty, Ultshot Town simply haven't done enough. They've huffed and puffed. They've looked promising at, at times. They've had little moments, but they've not had enough concerted cohesion and creativity to open up this Wildstone defence. And there are opportunities. that It looked early on like Ultrot Town might have the undoing of this Wildstone defence. The two wing-backs, Georgiou um, and Boldervine are far better going forward. They leave spaces behind them. 
if Aldershot Town can exploit that space, as I thought they were doing early on, then they can definitely get back into this game. But they've just floundered on the three-man Wildstone defence. They've played into their hands. They need to take their chances, create more chances, and take them. They're certainly capable of it, but they just... It's all been a bit something and nothing for me. I agree. I'd agree with that. Um, just on the um, penalty situation, the player that's involved, it's not great timing for him, Maghoma. We've had the, the rash challenge in the FA Cup and the three-game ban. Um, obviously, I, I thought a slightly unfortunate own goal up at Bradford where, you know, defender throws himself out, and, uh, you know, sticks a leg out and it, it diverts in. It happens once or twice a season. And, and I was backing him in a conversation with someone earlier on today, but Mike Brown just uh, messaging in. Theo and Christian are massive liabilities for the team. Discuss. I mean, <laughs> liability is a strong a strong word and clearly Mike is more than entitled to his opinion and I can I can see where those words are coming from I think Theo at his best is is an asset to this team but too often he lets his emotions he lets his aggressions get the better of him and if he can channel that aggression, if he can harness it to positivity, and we've seen his passing ability more this season, far more than we did last season, when he just looked maybe a little bit of a below par holding well, midfielder. Just can I interject? Of course. I've got no issues with his game, Theo Widrington. He's a far better player this year. Yeah. He just needs yeah. to know when to keep his mouth shut. Absolutely, Steve. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that needs to come from. And he should know. He's an experienced enough yeah. player. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna use the F word. It needs to come from his manager. Mm. Not from his father. It needs to come from his manager as a gaffer to a senior professional. We need you on the pitch. It's we can't afford yeah. you. Mm wasting a seat in the players area of the director's box yeah I agree I agree I, I love you Christian, know the, I, the other the positive side of that which he needs to harness is I love his passion you know yeah, yeah. I do love his passion he, he's it, a winner like his daddy wants absolutely. to win but you can't win at all costs it no, doesn't work like no. that and you should know when to pick your battles as for Christian I think he's a good solid can be stylish centre half. Maybe has a couple of moments of rashness, like you've said. The red card against Bath was. I still can't believe that he made a professional footballer made that sort of tackle. The, the own goal for me was unfortunate. <coughs> if a, li a little bit of an error of judgment. This afternoon, I remain to see replays, and it will be interesting to see the camera angle which I sh assume is on the other side of the pitch to us and maybe more towards what the assistant referee's view would have been but to me I saw his, angle, I saw his hands on Reed, but I see that a lot yeah. and I don't see penalties given that's no. what I would say no. uh, but, but then does but that mean tread, treading a fine line isn't exactly, it? Yeah. is it one of those situations where if you're for me it was shoulder to shoulder and Reed goes down if you put your hands on the upper torso of an attacker is that attacker at liberty to go down? Yes, he is. If that was Jack Barham against Jack Cook, you'd say, Cook's been stupid there. He's given Barham an opportunity and he's given the referee an opportunity to make a, a judgment that's maybe 50-50, 60-40. Yeah. And suddenly it goes against you and you think, well, that wasn't fair. But if you don't put your hands on the, def on the attacker, there's no risk of a referee making a poor judgment yeah so yeah perhaps if Christian has put his hands on the, on Reed, Reed's plenty experienced and wily enough to think well I'm in the penalty here penalty area here I'm, I'm going nowhere I'm running over to the assistant on the far side because the ball's heading that way I feel some hands on me what are you going to do it's not like you're through on goal with only the goalkeeper. Oh yeah, to be honest, I, I you don't are going to try and stay on your feet because yeah. you think, well, my best opportunity here is putting the ball in the net while the play is live. 
and then if I don't I might get a penalty dare I say to you as a fellow human being as dare you are I. and I am and, and, and the referee is if he does have uh, liberty to have a look at it in himself at half time and he sees that perhaps it was a bit soft and it wasn't then I can only think as a human being that maybe it increases the chances if all have a tight call in the second half and forget the penalty <laughs> yes unfortunately that that may be human nature you would hope that and I'm talking against Aldershot Town here you would hope that that's not the case because a referee should take each decision on its merits in isolation not think oh well I gave a 50-50 or a 51-49 in Wheelstone's favour so I'm going to give a 51-49 in Aldershot's favour that is absolutely how it should not happen <laughs> every decision should be purely on its merits without remembrance or recourse to anything that happened previously in the game but human nature is such and I don't want to turn this into a psychological discussion because we've only got 15 or, minutes yeah, and we won't have a break well, yeah, we're, <laughs> we're, we are categorically not psychologists but yeah. you wonder does human nature play a part subconsciously so. at the very least think maybe I should yeah. maybe in hindsight I wouldn't have given that penalty so maybe I give something yeah. as crucial or nearly as crucial to all shot town personally I don't, I don't want that but that doesn't mean it's not going to happen. I'm going to get the opinion now of somebody. Hello, Chris. <laughs> so I'm being joined by uh, briefly by Chris Woods, who's the former Aldershot Town media manager. We're on air. We're still having a good old debate about the penalty. And if there's one person in this ground who bleeds red and blue, red one arm, blue the other for Wheelstone, of course, long-term Aldershot fan, former media manager at Wilson. What was uh, what was your take, Chris, on the penalty? I didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Arsene. <laughs> Arsene Wenger. I was in the toilet. Uh, no, hang on. Hang on. Oh, well, let's have a chat with you anyway, Chris. How are you doing? You yeah, right? very good, thank you. All well. Um, and you're, you're not involved now at Wilson, but no. obviously this is a game you, you yeah, wouldn't want to yeah. miss. Just a punter now. Um, Wildstone need the result more than Aldershot at the moment in terms of the league table, but I'm just hoping for a good game, really. Yeah, I, 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 I concur with that. I think... If you're just seeing it from an Aldershot Town yeah, point yeah. of view, they need the win pretty badly today. Um, Wildstone haven't won away from home yet under Matty Taylor. It's five draws and three defeats. Yeah, they, they're they did win in there, the cup last week, though, away. That's true. So that's a good uh, Grimsby, wasn't good it? starter, yeah. So they've got a nice cup tie now, but they need to translate that form into the league desperately soon as well. Um, and it, and it's, I think it's same for Aldershot as well, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and it's this is probably obvious, really, to the eye, but I heard... Paul Jenkins on the podcast and one or two other people saying Wildstone weren't far off it they just needed someone to put the ball in the mm. net well he's definitely arrived doesn't he oh yeah hopefully they can get something sorted for him when his when his loan runs out because he's a really talented player I know Stuart when he was the manager was always trying to sign him so yeah he was highly sought after um, and yeah. I don't think his face fits at Oldham anymore not since no, that Christmas no. day dressing room tweet <laughs> well he's got Christmas off at Wildstone <laughs> <laughs> that's good to know <laughs> Chris, really good to see you as always, and uh, enjoy the rest of the game. Cheers, Rob. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Yeah, all good. Henry's come out of his warm-up before the others, but I don't know whether he just feels he's done what he wants to do. He's he's took a big coat off. Talking as much to you listeners as I am Steve alongside me. Uh, Wilston are out for the second half. All the shots uh, led out now by Aaron Jones. Well, Aaron Jones comes out. The team's somewhere behind him. Uh, a reminder that both Theo Widdington and Aaron Jones are on yellow cards. Looking at the uh, information on last Saturday's game up at Bradford, I don't think any Aldershot Town players got fucked in that one. Might be a first this season, might be a second. 
But yeah, Aaron Jones and Theo Widdington on yellows. Don't think any Wealdstone players have been shown yellow yet, Steve. Have they? Have they haven't, no, just two for all the shots. That other National League game, by the way, listeners, that's taking place on 12.30 kickoff. York City 2, Hartlepool 0. Uh, Lenny Lawrence confirmed as the uh, manager to the end of the season now with an increased coaching team, which includes Anthony Limbrick, the former Woking manager. Uh, but they've gone off in search of points at York City and they're 2-0 down. Right, second half about to get underway here. The shots attacking the East Bank end. And if they're going to get anything out of this one, they're going to need to score at the East Bank end at least once. Uh, Theo Widrington involved early. Goes back to Ellison. In fact, it, it goes past Ellison and Dewhurst is very quickly off his line to win it. And Wealdstone's confidence now must be almost sky high. There's a great win from Frost. Gets the ball back from Barham. Sends it forward looking for Barrett. Barrett goes down. And eventually the referee gives the free kick. And I wonder if that was the moment of that human nature we discussed there, Steve. It wasn't a penalty. It's two, three yards out. I wasn't sure if it was a free kick or not. But Barrett went down. The referee looked, paused, took his time gave the free kick and is now explaining to Dion Woodman why he's given the free kick I don't think he's showing yellow no he hasn't shown yellow but yeah I think Josh Barrett went down looking for the foul and I think the ref rightly took a second or two and it did seem like an age to take the emotion of Josh Barrett's appeal out of the equation and see the challenge for what it was OK, Barrett's over it, so is Ryan Jones. It's almost position A for a left footer. It's just outside the D, about another two or three yards outside the D. It's about 22, 23 yards. Barrett steps up. Oh, he catches it nicely. It's got a bit of fizz, a bit of curl. He was going for the far corner and it doesn't miss the upright by much, Steve. No, just a little bit too much. Maybe he needed it a little bit further out, Josh, but caught it sweetly, probably too sweetly. It needed to dip before it reached the goal line, but hopefully All Shot Town can continue that impetus. They started the first half with impetus and then it all just fizzled out to not very much, but hopefully they've had a few home, tru home truths in the dressing room at half-time and they'll pick, pick up their standards ball up to Barrett knocks it back to Frost great work back from Cissé here comes Ryan Jones motoring back to get Aldershot back on the ball Mag Homer gives it back to him and now lifts the ball down the line but it just doesn't get hold of that at all Barrett and Barham made exactly the same run there I don't know if you spotted that um, it didn't reach him anyway but uh, certainly they look keen to get on the front foot to up the tempo Aldershot throw in taken across the halfway line to Hargreaves who's gone through the gears and got a speed up sent it out to Aaron Jones Jones has got Lackey Bird to, out to the right of him Wildstone probably setting themselves for a very hard 10-15 minutes here to make sure they keep the precious lead they've got in this game shots near Wildstone 1 48 minutes gone now is Mag Homer feeding the ball to Frost Frost goes back to Ellison who is almost wrong footed by it but he does well to adapt, get it under control and feed Lackey Bird. Bird to Aaron Jones. Jones looking to skip round the outside of Giorgio but can't. Comes back to Hargreaves. Hargreaves to Frost. Frost will thread it across to Mag Homer. And Mag Homer tries a, a defence splitting ball. I don't know who it was to, to be honest. Uh, Ryan Jones was on the touchline. Barrett was inside and uh, referee is given in uh, coordination with his assistant referee a goal kick to Wealdstone I'm not quite sure what happened there Steve what did you think? No I, I think it was an intended pass for Ryan Jones and I think Christian expected to be making a run down the line and then in the end Mullins and Gandor are coming on ASAP okay I can tell you that because yeah. they've took their tops off I wonder if James Henry is he's sat down on the bench as well but I don't he know if he's starting to make his preparations. He's he's certainly looking. Oh, he's sitting down. He's looking 
Like yeah, he was the first one of the substitutes to finish his warm up and come over and take some of his outer clothing off. So yeah. um, he may have been given the nod. Tommy Whittington yeah. doesn't generally like to make half time substitutions. Very often, if he's going to make them, has them ready and makes them 52, 53, 54 minutes yeah. in, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. I th and I think that's a good, a good tactic. Um, Hadi Gandor might have been a planned change, um, as we've seen in recent games where he has his starters and, and his finishers and Jack Barham puts in the hard yards and then Gandor reaps the benefits or vice versa. Maxi Mullins, I think, would be more of a tactical change unless he wants to put Mullins up front. That's a contentious tackle by Dion Woodman on Josh Barrett, but the referee gives nothing despite Woodman being both feet off the ground. OK, a goal kick given to Aldershot at the other end, and I suspected Ellison might have had the last chance. So it's all a little bit all over the place at the start of this second half, but it remains shots nil, Wildstone one. We're past the 50-minute mark. David Ferguson has scored for Hartlepool at York. So it's 2-1 to York there. 1-0 to the Stones here against the Shots. The Stones um, have, have, have come here and won in recent seasons. I think all the shot have got the job done the last couple. There's a long ball from Ellison. It's a little bit too straight. And Adams uh, just takes the ball down on his chest and then eventually picks it up when Josh Barrett shuts him down. Uh, this game live on DAZN today, so uh, they'll be uh, providing their own commentary of that and not taking this one uh, on DAZN or on National League TV. So it's just yourselves and me and Steve, listeners, this afternoon. Good, uh, good afternoon or good morning, good evening, good middle of the night, wherever you're listening from around the country and around the world. The shots with it all to do here. Very <coughs> finely balanced game is slightly in Wildstone's favour thanks to a controversial penalty two minutes from half time shots coming forward but they're giving the ball away Sam Ashford does really well and goes back to Woodman who clips the ball forward and Ellison uh, hooks it Ellison hooks it into touch it hits the gutter and the gutter opens up to let all the water out on a couple of spectators who can't quite believe that they were in the wrong place at the wrong time as Cameron Hargreaves is fouled in deep inside his own half and uh, I think that water trickle is gradually slowing down because it isn't actually wet it's not actually raining out there it must have no, just been I, sat there yeah I think that's residual water from from the earlier part of this week but it's still coming down at quite a quite a volume and I think the reaction of the crowd obviously was one of humour but it gave them something to get really excited about and that's what they want from this shots team as well is Barham chasing is it a lost cause or can he pull it back he does well again for the third time today the shots win a corner by chasing a lost cause well done Jack Barham yeah superb but also I said probably about this point in the first half when Jack did exactly the same that typifies the hunger of their performance earlier in the, in the game they need to rediscover that hunger because it's gone missing. Heading for 53 minutes gone here. Shots nil, stones one. Barrett's going to take the corner. And it comes from the right-hand side. And it's met by the head of Mariapa, who jumps unopposed with a strong header out to Aaron Jones. Ryan Jones sends it back in. Maghoma gets up, can only flick it on. Lucky Bird's kept it in play. And he's fed Frost. Frost on the edge of the penalty area. Shown too much of it to Cissé. And Cissé bursts forward. Good ball into the feet of Ashford. Ryan Jones nibbles away and wins it back. Referee says fairly so. Aaron Jones tries to clear it. Can't at first. Goes up in the air. He wins the second header. Apologises for that. And then Tyler Frost sends the ball down the line. Goodman sends it into touch and over the north stand roof. And uh, it remains all shot town nil. Wildstone one. Uh, Josh Barrett's afternoon is done. He's going to be replaced by Max Mullins. So clearly coming on in a forward position unless we have a bit of a reshuffle. And Mullins, of course, came on and scored, didn't he? The winner against uh, Bath in the FA Cup. 
and Jack Barham's also coming off and he'll be replaced by Hadi Gandur two goals on the opening day of the season one since could it be his day could it be the way to do it to come off the bench fresh hungry and shaking off those injuries from the week <laughs> yeah it's remarkable that he's even able to take part this afternoon but certainly Jack Barham has put in some hard yards this afternoon you hope that Gandor can reap the rewards here's a ball forward from Wheelstone cut out by Ellison and brought down by Hargreaves but then lost and then one in the air by Ellison again finds Aaron Jones bit of a high foot but no Wheelstone player near him so good header from Maghome and another good header from Widrington into the feet of Gandor Gandor gallops down the right-hand side. The ball's played into the path of Max Mullins. He holds it up. All the shot with fresh legs and a bit of energy and perhaps inspiration. Hargreaves with a good turn feeds Mullins. Mullins is tackled well by Mar Mariapo, shown at times his class. Here's Ellison uh, up against Reed, heading the ball into touch. 55 and a half minutes, very nearly gone. Still shots nil, Wildstone one. I don't think there's any change of shape, is there, Steve? Uh, just uh, Mullins joining Frost as the two number yeah. tens and Gandor replacing Gandor, yeah Barham. Gandor up top replacing Barham and Mullins playing that right sided number ten alongside Tyler Frost here's Reed heading the ball can't on and then can't keep it in goes behind the goal away to our right and uh, Wildstone still have that precious lead shots playing the ball in and around their own box Hargreaves I beg your pardon Theo Widgerton goes back to Dewhurst Cook gets there in front of Mullins and wins the header but only sends it as far as Aaron Jones Jones finds Theo Widrington and Widrington finds Lucky Bird Bird under pressure from Kretschmar pushes it into touch Bold Ryan with the throw in fact Bold Ryan's going to leave the ball for Dion Goodman who's going to trot very gingerly Kretschmar's given a signal to the Wheelstone bench I think that he's done um, if I understood the, if I understood it right, he gave it the one of those, the old rolling finger, the old Gary Lineker after Gaza was uh, lost his head. That one. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I don't, I don't know. It could have been an answer to something else, but uh, it looked like he was telling him he's blowing a bit. Uh, here's Reed up against Ellison. Ellison takes no chances, clears it into touch, and Wildstone will have an attacking throw on their right side down at the. Uh, Mike Pusey community stands. Yeah, looking at the away, the away dugout, there is movement. It looks like one of the Wildstone players is getting, uh, getting some instructions from, from an iPad. One of the Wildstone could coaches. well be Sean Adarqua or Harry, Henry Sander, most likely. I would have thought. Um, Bold Ryan is going to take this throw short to Ashford. Gets it back. Looks to go past Ryan Jones, who toes it back in. At the moment, Steve, we're almost on the hour mark. We're almost a third of the way through the second half. And Aldershot, frankly, apart from Barrett's free kick just wide, haven't created a lot yet. No, I think they were something and nothing first half. They've gone backwards second half. Well, Kretschmar sends it across the area. Dewhurst punches it up in the air and then catches it. Desperate to go with the early ball out to the left side. And he's going to look for Gandor against Goodman. Goodman, uh, beg, beg your pardon, Woodman. Uh, he wins it, but then Jones wins it and sends it inside for Frost. Frost can't get it under control, and Boldwine comes down this right-hand side. The former Eastie player, the former Notts County and Sutton player. Well done, Ryan Jones. Forced it into touch off of Boldwine. Throw in to the shots. Jones sends it forward. Uh, Gandor can't win it cleanly Kretschmar sends it forward Jones slices it up in the air lovely first touch from Cissé then Maghoma comes across and clears it into touch and uh, it will be a throw to Wildstone on halfway and we are a minute and a half away from the hour mark here at the EVB in the shots trail 1-0 to the Stones yeah James Henry is completing a, a warm up he's just come back and it looks like he's ready to take off his green bib Hopefully he's imminent. For me, I get your suggestions for the Wildstone possible substitute. If you're replacing Kretschmar, I think Obiero is the, the best choice as an attacking midfield. OK, that's a that, uh, third choice I overlooked. Have you seen the fourth official's board or anything? Or? No, 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 oh, that's, right. purely, yeah. that's purely my opinion. Like, Good absolutely fix. zero inside information. 
Good flicked header on by Mullins. Finds Ganzor, who's fouled. Free kick taken quickly. And Theo Widrington's lost possession. Shot comes in early from Ashford. Sensed that Dewhurst was off his line, but got it all wrong. And Theo Widrington turned inside and turned into trouble there. Uh, Wildstone are pretty switched on with their press today. And they realise that they've got to be hard to break down and perhaps just hit all the shot once more and hurt them on the transition to, in all, uh, to ensure that uh, the, um, the points head back to Grosvenor Vale today. At the moment, that is what's due to happen unless the shots can score. Oh, Maghoma tries to head a ball back, completely misses it, and then ends up skying it over on the roof of the south stand, and that's not going to silence the dissenters who would rather get the narrative going that he's a liability. I, I'm... I think he's had one or two difficult moments in an, otherwise, in an otherwise pretty composed season. Yeah, for me. no, absolutely. And this, this is not against Christian entirely. I'm afraid that's symptomatic. That moment is symptomatic of the, the flat, the disjointed, the lacking in quality and inspiration with which Aldershot Town have started this second half. I, James Henry is on. But he's come on for Cameron Hargreaves, Steve. Possibly playing more of a well, He's coming in central midfield, midfield, midfield position, like he did up at Hartlepool, but with Theo Widrington on a, on a yellow card from the first half and walking yeah. the tightrope, um, that might be something to do with minutes in the legs and, 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 and fitness levels. Possibly, but you would think, um, if you're looking for complementary central midfield partnerships, yeah. you'd think the box-to-box -box energy of Cameron Hargreaves and the quality on the ball of James Henry but maybe Henry will play take Frost's position and Frost will drop back slightly here's a ball forward from Lackey Bird looking for Frost so Tommy Whittington's made his three substitute well we can have more but he's made three substitutions now and uh, James Henry the old shot town's top scorer is on six goals up until last weekend two more in the national league cup if you count them in your tally they're counted in the program so i'm gonna have him on eight goals for yeah, the season it's a first team fixture and uh initially though he's uh, watching the ball go past him in midfield uh, but uh, lucky bird does well to win it and then max mullins wins it in the air it's flicked on kretschmar maybe he didn't signal that his time was up or maybe he did because uh we are going to see Elliot Thorpe. There we go. We had three guesses and we were wrong with all three of them. <laughs> Elliot Thorpe's going to come on. Here's Ellison clearing it forward. Up to Gandor. Takes it down. Uh, turns it around the corner. But he, he can only find a Wildstone player. Uh, and that's Giorgio. He's working hard to try and win it back. But he infringes Giorgio. And this one is eking and crawling and edging its way to Wildstone 1-0 thanks to that 44th minute controversial penalty Maghoma on Reed. okay yeah Thorpe is a, a right or left wing back so yeah Thorpe is coming on for Dion Woodman um, and Boldrine by the look of it is going back into the back three wow Okay, that's, <laughs> that's an interesting one, isn't a it? New one on me, but he's gone into the centre. Has it? Oh well, no, they've got no, no, they've got an attacking free kick at the minute, so the centre halves are forward. So let's call that a moot point. Uh, Lucky Bird wins it in the air, but he can only head it to Kretschmar. Kretschmar plays it out to that man Thorpe. Thorpe's up against Ryan Jones now. Tries an early cross, and it's missed by a couple of people, and then ends up going over the bar. I think it might have been just behind one of the Wheelstone players and he's reached back and it's flicked up off his leg and over the bar. Goal kick to shot, 63 minutes gone and now we can see the shape Wheelstone are taking. Um, and Enzio Baldwin has indeed gone. He is one, he's the right-sided right centre-back with Mariapa in the middle and Cook on the left. Yeah. But that was a, as a first touch in the game. What a cross that was from Thorpe. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now... All the shot coming down the left with Lucky Bird. Max Mullins might get away from his man here. He's timed his one rally. He's up against Boldwine. He's uh, then had a poor touch and Boldwine's won it back. And then Mullins has caught him inadvertently, I think, but free kick to Wildstone. And Boldwine showing all of his uh, experience at this level of the game, the Dutchman. Yeah, he knew, knew what he was doing. Uh, ushered the error. Bought 
bought his team a bit of time, a valuable bit of time. Wheelstone start. Oh, sorry, Steve. No, I just going to say all my notes in the second half. It's been Josh Barrett's free kick, and then it's been substitutions. That's Old it. Shot Town need to lift it at the moment. They're going down with barely a whimper. Ashley Nathaniel George has scored for York to go 3-1 up against Hartlepool. All the other games, of course, uh, three o'clock kickoffs or later. Wheelstone have a throw in and they are 25 minutes plus added time away from taking all three points uh, here at the EBB this season and uh, Wheelstone started the day in 22nd place with 15 points but uh, Aldershot some six ahead of them you could see that deficit halved and uh, pulled a little bit nearer to uh, the relegation positions themselves they started the day 17th We've got a free kick just inside the Wildstone half uh, for a foul on Hadi Gandor yeah, Ryan Jones the clearest is foul it. you'll ever see <laughs> yeah absolutely Harry Apper had both his arms around Gandor and if he hadn't Gandor would have been away well shots have bought on Max Mullins and uh, they've bought on Hadi Gandor and they've bought on Henry. In comes the ball into the box. Cook heads it up in the air and then a Wildstone player will head it on again. Giorgio will find another Wildstone player and they're going to turn defence into attack here. Um, and uh, that's going to be a free kick against Ellison and probably a yellow card. I don't know. He can't believe the foul's been given. He is going to get a yellow card as well. And that's the third one shown to an Aldershot Town player this afternoon. I, he seemed infuriated by the decision, but I'm absolutely certain that the Wildstone player running at pace just lost his footing as a result of that yeah. Ellison challenge. I, I'm not sure whether there was any contact, but it was a trailing leg from Ellison as the, was it Boldvine cut inside? And yes, he had to hurdle Ellison's leg, lost his balance maybe took the opportunity to go down but he was going down and yeah for me that's a foul and Wildstone are offside in the follow up from the uh, free kick and Aldershot need to find be it from one of those three substitutes or from a collective or from a moment that lifts them and lifts the crowd but they need to find something from somewhere um, seven, they've, been, they've been horribly flat yeah. in the second half yeah going to do an update to radio pretty quickly within the next minute or so has all shot winner free kick in an attacking position out on the left hand side just to the left of the penalty area so bold Ryan is having an exclamation an exclamation from the referee and he's going to be shown a yellow card as well Took a long time to make his decision there, the referee. Does make you wonder if he wasn't going to give a yellow and Baldwin talked himself into it. Henry and Ryan Jones are over this free kick. I think I think James Henry as a right-footed in-swinger is the more likely for me. Jones stands there as if he's going to send it in the left-footed, but I, I think it'll be Henry. 68 minutes gone shot still trailing 1-0 to the stones but this attacking free kick now Henry sends the ball into the area and the keeper jumps and catches it and falls to the ground and it remains shots nil stones one and uh, if he's going to provide some inspiration it wasn't that moment no, so it was all, all a little bit over here I think the goalkeeper could have caught it or just let it drift behind there was absolutely no danger. Lucky Bird with a header, headed on from Theo Widrington, but then Ashford turns it forward and Bird wins it again. Henry jumps but can't win it cleanly. Aaron Jones gets there first and sends the ball up to Hadi Gandoy. His control looked all right, but Jack Cook read exactly where it was going to drop and nipped a foot in and cleared it forward. Then shots go all the way back to Dewhurst. He clears up to the right-hand side. 
Gandor again keeps it in but can only send it straight. Wheelstone's positional sense today has been superb. They seem to be set to pick up every loose ball. Here's Maghoma battling away up against Kretschmar, who is still out there. Not quite sure what is... Well, the ball comes in the air and Reed heads it up in the air and it's caught by Dewhurst. 69 and a half minutes, the ball sent now down the left-hand side and it will go straight into touch and out for a throw-in. Boldwine is out there to take the throw. Halfway inside his own half as we approach the 70-minute mark. <clears throat> Down the line, Ryan Jones wins the header. Mariapa sends it back. Dan Ellison sends it the other way. Frost flicks it on, but into touch. And Matty Taylor is 20 minutes away from his first away win as Wealdstone manager in the National League. He's had five draws, but hasn't been able to get that win. They got the win, of course, with a clean sheet, 1-0 away at Grimsby last week. Bigger stadium, bigger team, higher level, more toxic atmosphere, and they did it then. They'll back themselves to do it again today. Here's Ryan Jones winning the ball off Thorpe. Thorpe responds, comes back, and uh, blocks it into touch. Throw into shots on halfway. Shots take the throw quickly. Jones across to Henry. Henry feeds Macoma. Macoma's got Aaron Jones. James Henry bombing forward. Uh, he's looking for the return pass and he's not going to get there. But he battles away with Jack Cook. Forces Cook to have another touch. And uh, Wilson have got it in their own area and they look really calm on it. And it's hard to believe looking at that side today, Wildstone, that they're in the bottom four of this division. But as we've said, they weren't far out of games. And Alex Reed has just made the difference with his eight goals in five games or less than five games. Going to update our radio listeners very shortly with the news here from the EBB. Ball forward, one in the air by Kretschmar, sent back by Ellison, and then headed clear by Lucky Bird. Flicked on by Ashford, looking for Reed. Reed hooks it over his head. Lucky Bird should be able to head it into the path of Ryan Jones, who sensibly under pressure from Thorpe sends it forward into a position on the right hand side. Gandor, can he keep it in on the touch line? It's tight. No, it's gone into touch. And it is. Yes, it's 1 0 here to Wealdstone. A magnificent remembrance weekend attendance, Tim, of 3,000. 156 with 204 Wealdstone fans. That's just been announced to the crowd. A wonderful occasion in terms of the pomp of the ceremony, but all the shot have not quite been able to match it on the pitch. A really tight first half was heading for nil-nil until the 43rd minute when Christian Maghoma was adjudged to have been a bit heavy-handed on Alex Reed inside the penalty area. And Reed, who has ignited Wealdstone's season tucked away the spot kick for his eighth goal in five games since joining on loan from Oldham. In truth, since then, Tim Aldershot have only huffed and puffed. Josh Barrett had a free kick just a minute or two into the second half and curled it just wide. Since then, they've struggled to find any momentum. Wildstone, worthy of the slender one-goal lead they've got. Join us again in the next half hour. Seventy-three minutes gone. Widrington onto a loose. No, he's not. Kretschmar's got there in front of him. Oh, Aaron Jones has won it well, and then he feeds Henry. Henry's lost it, won it, won it back again, lost it again. And Jack Cook's now got it on halfway. He loves to get his head down and make 15, 20, 30 yards. He's still going. Tries the ball into Kretschmar. Uh, Kretschmar to Giorgio. They look in control of this game. Ball into Reed. Back to goal, edge of the area. Frost has shown and got something on it. Lucky Bird's got something on it. Jack Cook has got something on it. And Thorpe bursts down the right-hand side. Lucky Bird comes across and wins the ball. Puts it up in the air, but it drops down without pace to Cissé. Cissé sends it in. Oh, Kretschmar's there inside the penalty area. And he should have scored. Kretschmar saved it 
with his leg, I think, or diving away to his right. Game should be over, should be 2 0. Ball comes into the area, Reed's got it back to goal. McHomer pokes it away, and then Thorpe curls a shot left footed high and over. 75th minute we're in, it's 1 0 Wheelstone. Steve, it should be 2. It should. Fantastic save from Marcus Dewhurst, but Kretschmar just ghosted into the penalty area completely unmarked unnoticed an excellent ball into him it bypassed the striker at the at the front of the penalty area nobody had bothered picking up Kretschmar he hit it sweetly but Dewhurst doing what every Wildstone fan knows he can do and blocking one on one and keeping his side in the game ball into the area from Wildstone snaffled by Dewhurst who's keeping all the shot in it Mullins with a deft flick he's looking for Ryan Jones but uh, he was heading it from an offside position and um, I'm trying to think what the game was and certainly Rochdale springs to mind they took the lead and controlled the game like Wildstone are doing and Aldershot never had a sniff of getting back into it did they and uh, no. um, it, it feels a little bit like that Wildstone not as impressive perhaps as Rochdale on the day but nevertheless pretty impressive and yet again Steve Aldershot struggling against the bottom four side yes they're yeah. in good form but it, it's the facts it is, it is an Achilles heel I don't know what the reason is but it's something that needs to be remedied pretty quickly and um, Wildstone did make the change up front uh, a dark work came on for Ashford straight swap up front but Adark was a much more physical proposition as a striker thank you very much Steve balls into the area and Reed lifts out a heel to flick it um, ooh, Ryan Jones has just cleared it forward it's come off of Thorpe and Thorpe's just caught his knee on on, on Ryan Jones's knee there um, and Jones is a bit sore but I think he's more annoyed that the ball another ball hasn't come yeah. down Somehow, this sort of shot town team need to lift the crowd. The crowd needs to lift the team. Otherwise, this one's going to fizzle out on Remembrance Day. Nil one. 14 minutes to go. Cissé beats Frost in the air. Kretschmar beats Widrington in the air. Bird holds the ball up. I beg your pardon. Reed holds the ball up against Bird. And Aldershot pressing well, trying to win the ball back. All those three substitutes looking sprightly, looking mobile Wheelstone send it forward one in the air by Aaron Jones when all the shot win save headers to win the ball back they've headed it back to Wheelstone players all game Steve and Wheelstone yeah. have done the opposite yeah yeah I think they just lacked a bit of cohesion all, all game but particularly in the second half here's Wheelstone in possession on halfway Ryan Jones does well wins the throw in for shots off of Thorpe whose first touch was to send in a delightful cross and since then he's had his work cut out um, again Wildstone with the header goes straight to a Wildstone player it's almost like it's happening too many times to not be a coincidence <laughs> Aldershot have got the knockdown here though oh and as Frost gets the ball and gets the chance to burst down the left a Wildstone player Max Kretschmar canny as ever goes down stays down encourages the referee to stop the game which he does and then gets straight up on his feet Steve yeah I think he's he's, he's alleging a an elbow or or a forearm made contact with his head I think that's called game management isn't it if you're being kind it is referees when now going to your team doing it it's game start management, with it. but yes it's yeah referees we don't we don't know what Max felt He's going to give the possession back to Aldershot, to Frost on the left-hand side. At least he's got that bit of it right, referee. And he'll say he was putting player safety at first. He's not to know that Kretschmar's uh, play acting. Here's Ellison with the ball out to the right-hand side. Uh, Aaron Jones heads it backwards into touch and he's offside anyway. And if one moment today kind of encapsulates yep. the feeling, that's it. Yeah, yeah, it's been disjointed, it's been flat, it's lacking inspiration and creativity too often basic passes have have gone astray and yeah we're, we're into the last 12 minutes plus injury time of the game all shot town need to lift it drastically and quick because at the moment there's only one winner 
and Wildstone don't need to push it they don't need to go get another goal they're all too comfortable as it is yeah I, I hate to say this listeners but I always have to call it as it is if all the shot get a goal now and get a draw they'll have nicked a point yeah agreed yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely yeah Wildstone now have a throw they're in no hurry to take it it's halfway level with the Aldershot Town penalty area on the left hand side in front of the open slab which is pretty well populated today in fact the whole ground is a terrific crowd only the second one over 3,000 this season turning out a show of force on Remembrance Day here's a ball into the air and nodded down by Reed. Kretschmar can't quite get it away he can't quite get anything going can he here's Gandor turning against Boldwine and it's a free kick and Boldwine's already got a yellow Steve but I think it's just going to be a free kick that's Ref, the kind of the kind of is thinking. Yeah. Yeah. He's, uh, yeah I th he briefly thought about it, but I think it was more just to tell Theo. One of those, I'm telling you now, it. if it's their one player who hasn't already got a yellow, he shows yellow for that, but he doesn't because he's on a yellow. Here's all the shot with Jones sending it in. Headed away by Giorgio. Straight into the path of. Well, straight into the path of Mag Homer, but he goes to ground, ground and can't win the tackle. And then he goes to ground and does win a tackle. Well recovered. Christian Mag Homer. Aldershot have still got it. Ellison up to Woodington, turns the ball around the corner into the path of Frost, who's running forward, and he's had the ball picked up off him by the Wheelstone number 15. Maghoma dives in again and, and misses it. And um, ball played forward, hits Ellison on the hand, not deliberately, surely. His, his trailing hand. And he's got, oh, that is ridiculous, referee! Ellison's running along, the ball bounces up and hits his hand, the referee gives a free kick, shows a second yellow and Dan Ellison is sent off and the shots are down to 10 men and Steve, the referee who gave a soft penalty in the first half has just ruined the player's afternoon because the ball bounced up and hit his hand. Yeah, for me, a free kick but nothing more, not deliberate unless... Oh, shocking! Unless he did... No way was that deliberate. Hand, but no way. I think it's moving too fast for it to be deliberate. A trailing arm gets hit by the ball. And you can see Ellison's frustration as he as he runs off down the tunnel. He throws some of his strapping to the floor in anger, understandably. And Ultshot Town had a lot to do with 11 men. It has now become a mountain. 82 gone. And a free kick to Wildstone. Thorpe sends it into the far post. Jack Hook squares it across. It's half cleared. Shot comes in and that's blocked. Cleared away by Mag Homer. Mullins battling away against Cissé. Cissé sends it into touch. Throw into the shots. Down to ten men now. Seven and a half minutes left. Throw in taken quickly. Gandor back to Ryan Jones. Ryan Jones down the left sends in the cross over everybody and another offside given against Aldershot. Oh wow. We've Yeah, we've we've just had a second controversial incident from the referee Elliot Swallow. Dan Ellison already on a yellow, chasing back in a pretty much 50-50 situation. The ball bounces up and clearly his ball hits uh, sorry, his hand hits the ball, beg your pardon, sir. Um, and uh, the referee gives the free kick, which I think we kind of just about concurred with, but then he shows a second yellow, and he's ruined Dan Ellison's an afternoon and probably all the shot towns as well. He's gone off. Steve, your thoughts on that again for the benefit of our radio listeners? Yeah, I, th I think it's a, a harsh yellow card. A free kick, absolutely, it's got to be, but I think the ball was moving too fast. I think Ellison's movement was, was not towards the ball. Yeah, I think it's harsh. But the two, the two controversial decisions, yes, have probably decided this game. But still, for me, Aldershot Town have not done enough this afternoon. You can say without the penalty it will be nil-nil, but Aldershot Town needed a victory here this afternoon. Steve's just going to pause because Gandor's coming down the right, Tim, up against Jack Cook. Can he get his cross in? Yes, he can. It's flicked on. Frost on the edge of the area. Can he get the ball out of his feet and get a shot? He can. It's up in the air. It's deflected up. Henry's onto the loose ball, but he can only head it into the grateful clutches of the substitute Wheelstone keeper. 
Adams and uh, my goodness me it's cranking up now but wonderful occasion here this afternoon uh, Tim for Remembrance uh, weekend over 3,000 but at the moment it's a very frustrated Red and Blue Army watching on 84 minutes gone shots nil wheeled stone one Belie believe it or not listeners while Steve was talking to the radio listeners Reed fell in the penalty area again in a little physical tussle not dissimilar to the one in the first half in which a penalty was given well the assistant referee and referee weren't going to give that one were they <laughs> no and I think rightly rightly so but two wrongs do not make a right no. I wanted to give the referee the benefit of the doubt on the penalty decision because he'd he'd, he'd allowed his assistant referee yellow card Tommy Widrington it allowed his assistant referee to say I've got a clearer view of that to show a second yellow to Dan Ellison there's absolutely no way that referee could have categoric proof in his head that Ellison put his hand deliberately on the ball I didn't think he did Steve didn't think he did and uh, a second controversial moment that was totally unnecessary and just helps turn the screw really for Wildstone um, who've been good don't get me wrong I'm not disputing they deserve the three points this afternoon they haven't got them yet it's still 1-0 and there's four minutes left plus added time they've got to throw in on the left hand side and Steve who's uh, right in the non-league match uh, non-league paper match report today and has got a much more relaxed deadline I'm sure well <laughs> I, I wouldn't go that far I would <laughs> never suggest that to, to any of the editors at the NLP Here's the throw in taken, balls drilled in, cleared away by Lackey Bird, headed back in, uh, all the way through to Dewhurst. Mullins is up on the last man, Gandor's on his way there, so is Henry. Huge kick, very high, Gandor can't win it against Mariapa, he's won everything in the air, whoever he's been up against today. Widrington flicks the ball on, and another offside, I can't believe it. Every time Aldershot get on the end of the final line, they've been given offside four times at least in the second half, Steve. Yeah, it is four times, and they are the team that has been caught offside most in the whole National League. Most of that has been Jack Barham and Hadi Gandor before this afternoon, but this Worldstone defence is very well drilled, very well organised, and marshalled superbly by Cook and Mariapa particularly. York City started the day top of the National League table and they will finish it there too. They are 4-2 up against Hartlepool and currently going four points clear of the chasing pack. As it stands, Wealdstone will move out of the relegation positions up to 20th and the shots uh, prior to the 3pm kickoffs at least will stay in 17th place but they could drop into the relegation well they could drop as far as 20th this afternoon um, that's for sure if other teams win here is Adarqua clipping the ball into the box easy for Dewhurst to pluck out of the air he uh, throws it out to the right hand side and says there you go James Henry chase that bounces once goes into touch you can hear the ironic jeers of the Wealdstone fans who sense victory they sense that uh, they're going to take all three points home from North East Hampshire this afternoon and continue their own upward trajectory with a second consecutive 1-0 away win on a Saturday. The other one coming at Boundary, not Boundary Park, that's old a minute. Okay, <laughs> Blundell, Blundell Park. Park. Here's a ball forward. Gandor can't get onto it. Uh, Mariapa clears it forward rather desperately, tumbles over as he does so. Ryan Jones controls the ball nicely, skips past his man. I thought he won a free kick and the referee does give all the shot the free kick but uh, they'll have to fetch the ball first and come back we've got less than two minutes plus whatever's added here at the EBB on what is proving to be a frustrating day for all the shot town a controversial day in the National League but one in which Wealdstone won't care a jot Dewhurst plays the pass short to Ryan Jones now he's going to send in a deep cross Magoma jumps Mariapa pushes into the back of him he can't win it it goes over his head and disappears off behind the goal and I hate to say it it's not through any lack of effort at all but Aldershot Town have done nothing more than huff and puff in this second half Steve no the angle of that cross was all too 
all too wrong. You needed to aim it towards the edge of the six yard box, but Magoma was always going to be the last man and if it goes over his head, there's nothing coming of it. But yeah, all shot town have, have given effort, but very little else. They've still, I believe, not mustered a shot on target and they've just been flat, disjointed, lacking in basic cohesion. Oh, heavy touch from Aaron Jones. And he's going to get a second yellow as well. And referee Elliot Swallow shows red again. He doesn't care how much controversy there is. He was momentarily late there, Aaron Jones, after a heavy touch. And again, the referee could have just given a free kick to Wildstone, but he decides to send Aaron Jones off and Theo Widrington isn't happy but he has to keep quiet because he's on two yellows already Aaron Jones pulls off his armband thinks about passing it on and thinks well there's no point it's only going to be a waste of time another red for Aldershot Town the second of the season for Aaron Jones and it's crumbling here for the shots at the EBB one nil down two men down and one win in 11, Steve Gibbs. Yeah, I mean, the referee has contributed to Aldershot Town's downfall, but also their performance, even with 11 men, even when it was 0-0, was sadly lacking. We said before the start of kickoff that Aldershot Town needed to be on this to put in a solid, convincing performance that took three points. Oh, here's James Henry. He's lost possession. And now Kretschmar does send it home. He scores yet again against Aldershot after fluffing his lines all afternoon, but he stuck this one in the net. James Henry picked off in possession just outside his own penalty area and Aldershot Town's day from, goes from bad to worse to downright terrible. Aldershot Town nil, Wheelstone 2. Yeah, that's Aldershot Town trying to get back into it using... James Henry as a quarterback to launch an attack but he got caught in possession of Max Kretschmar doing what Max Kretschmar has been doing for years, it seems like decades composed, calm finish sealing the three points it doesn't rain it isn't raining but it's pouring and uh the only thing falling from the sky is the leaves on the trees behind the Mike Pusey community stand end. How is this going to change things? Tommy Widgerton has had the uh, backing of the Shots fans. I think far, by far the majority of them still coming into today's game. But today is a miserable home defeat. Two more players. It is. Uh, the lack of potency, the lack of um, discipline. But I, I can't really honestly say that I thought either of those second yellows were deserved. No, they weren't. No need not. for it. You've no. already punished the team referee with a very, very tight penalty and a very, very um, controversial second yellow. Jones has a heavy touch. The ball's still there to win. He goes in. He's momentarily late. And it's a free kick. Nothing more. I'm sorry, listeners. You know I tell it as I see it. And my, it's not about having rose-tinted spectacles. It's not about being biased. Let's call it as I see it. Soft, soft penalty. Terrible second yellow for Ellison. And a very debatable one for Aaron Jones too. That's my opinion. We'll hear Steve's as we wrap things up uh, in a couple of minutes. But this referee is going to be booed off the pitch when the uh, full-time whistle goes. Yes, it's not his fault that Aldershot Town haven't scored. That's their own issues to work at. But uh, it really hasn't helped. Is Gandal going down the left side. Jack Cook brings him down. Free kick to Aldershot. And uh, not sure there's any yellow cards coming out for Wheelstone, is there? Or is he going to stick another one in the book? He does like five per game, the referee. And uh, there it is. There you go, ref. You've hit your average. I hope you're happy. That was Jack Cook. Are you with us, Tim? No, I thought Tim had come to us on the radio. I beg your pardon. Uh, so, 90... Your 
Yeah, Max Kretschmar's just doubled Wheelstone's lead and the referee's doubled his red card count. Another controversial decision. Aaron Jones with a second yellow. Two goals down, two men down. They have an attacking free kick that might allow them to get something in this final minute of five added on. Out on the right-hand side, in it comes from Frost. It's headed away by Wheelstone's Thorpe and back to James Henry. Just stay with us a few more seconds and we'll sum it all up for you as well, Tim. Another ball back in from Frost. Maghoma heads it down. It's pulled back from Henry and it goes straight into the clutches of Adams, the substitute Wheelstone keeper. It's been a frustrating afternoon. Now, let's be clear about one thing, Tim. It is not the referee's fault that Aldershot Town haven't scored at the EBB today. And um, they haven't been good enough going forward. Wheelstone have been excellent out possession and they've controlled large parts of the game. But the referee has hit all the shot when they're down, in my opinion. Let's get the opinion in these closing seconds where a goal for either side won't change the result, Tim. Uh, 95 minutes are up. Steve Gibbs, just anything you can add to that while we've got our radio listeners with us? No, it's been a, hor a horrible performance from Aldershot Town. There's uh, a disgruntled fan to the right of us in the North Stand shouting at Tommy saying, this is garbage. And Tommy's just opened his hands and gone, I can't argue. Free kick to shots in their own area. Um, Tim, we're going to wrap it up there for you and let you get on to previewing uh, the rest of the afternoon sport. But the points are going back to Grosvenor Vale with Wealdstone. Matty Taylor has his first away win as uh, Wealdstone manager in the National League. He'd had five draws in fairness prior to that out of the previous eight games. But for Aldershot now, one win in 11 and they're going down here by at least two goals to nil and finishing the game with nine men. OK, throw in to be taken. I'll talk to you about that in a minute, Steve. There's the final whistle. Big boos, and I think they're definitely more for the referee than they are for the team. All to shot down, and given they're all for the cause, but they sadly just not had the quality needed today in order to get on the goal sheet the, themselves, Steve. Um, but in terms of losing the game, um, the referee's played a big part. He has, but I don't think his decisions can be allowed to be used as an excuse for the the nature of Aldershot Town's performance in 90 plus minutes they failed to muster a shot on target they've been disjointed they've been flat lacking in cohesion lacking in just the basics of passing a ball to another red shirt at times and yes Wildstone are on an upward trajectory they were gifted a, a, a soft penalty at a crucial point in the game that gave them a lead just before half time the second the second goal is pure confetti that doesn't matter all shot down were going down 1-0 or 2-0 but the performance has been horrible one of the most dispiriting that I can remember here certainly under Tommy Widrington for quite some time but I fear that the referee's involvement will paper over some of the cracks because this is all the shot towns worst run for quite some time there are people saying it's the worst refereeing performance they've seen down here for quite some time and a couple of contentious decisions went against the home side. Whether that whether that equates to a a poor refereeing performance, clearly, if the if the decisions had gone for all shot town against Wildstone, I don't think anyone anyone would be complaining, saying, "Well, we've won, but you are unfair referee." It's always when it goes against your team that you notice it more, and that's we spoke about at half time. That's completely human nature, but it should not distract from the complete lack of quality in all the shot towns play from front to back almost from minute one to 90. Did you uh, pick out an all the shot town man of the match today Steve? I did not. I, I think I thought Lucky Bird was very I think good. Lucky was, yeah, yeah, yeah Lucky yeah, was yeah, good. Yeah. I think Marcus made a couple of a couple of strong saves. Um, 
other than that I think players had fleeting glimpses of their true ability otherwise individually and collectively they were very very much below par all right thanks Steve a wretched miserable afternoon for shots fans we've been a little bit more one-sided with our commentary today um, thinking that uh, Wheelstone fans will be if anything listening to the uh, NLTV or uh, the zone coverage ironically all the shot have been on the zone twice this season two home games two two nil defeats <laughs> yeah and, and Wheelstone have been have been excellent they've done everything that's been needed of them and more they've been more than worthy winners they've kept all the shot town at something of an arm's length excellent at the back and they've had just enough quality and cohesion and it hasn't taken much more than that it's taken the basics that Matt Taylor will expect as a given in every game and he's walking off all smiles applauding the directors in the director's box as they applaud their players Jack Cook pumping his fist giving it giving it the big congratulations Max Kretschmar as well they're going to be absolutely delighted with this performance and the three points and rightly so and what it might mean for their season this along with the FA Cup win which has maybe gone under the radar a little bit but these this week and these results that they picked up in the league the draw and the victory against Braintree and now the victory here this afternoon this can be a huge catalyst for their season to pull them away from the relegation zone and for and Aldershot Town potentially drag them into it yeah and drag Aldershot Town into it Tommy Widrington rightly said when Aldershot Town beat Bath and Derby County in FA Cup and National League Cup that you take the momentum and the confidence from victories in other competitions to boost you in the league what they needed to do this afternoon was put the defeats against Bradford and Brighton under 21s behind them and push on in the league they haven't they've just continued continued that downward trajectory into a, a slough of despond they looked like team they looked like a team that haven't won for a while they look like teams that have lost two in a week and whether that's a mentality thing a physical thing I don't know but they very very quickly need to drag themselves out of this because they've got at the moment every game is difficult for Aldershot Town but wherever they travel next and I'm it's Gateshead away mate <laughs> well in that case maybe I change my tune maybe there are maybe there is an easy game in the National League no no if you go into Gateshead yeah and then you've got Altrincham at home Dagenham away to complete November it's Ultra, not the, it's not the town need to pick Gate, themselves Gate, up yeah Gateshead away is a stinker Gateshead the other, the other, the other two are, are, are more palatable yes, but absolutely but then if this afternoon snowballs into a defeat at Gateshead where are where, do, where does that leave you suddenly rather than looking o above you thinking oh a couple of wins we could be close to the playoffs mm -hmm. another couple of defeats and you're down among the dead men and that is not where Tommy Widrington wanted his season to go it's not where anybody thought Aldershot Town season would go. I think it's Particularly also... Particularly after that yeah. really positive start. Yeah, I think it's also a time for calm heads right now. Football's an emotive game, and on the back of that, when the boos stop for the referee because the fans won't see him again, they'll probably turn a little bit on um, on, the, on the Aldershot management team. I think they uh, deserve a bit more time and patience. Undoubtedly, yeah, they, they, they're not as potent this season, and... and you know he may have to somehow jiggle things around to to bring uh, someone else in um, no question marks for me about the effort of the team it just sadly lacking in quality but we're going to wrap it up there listeners and let you get on with the rest of your weekend thanks for joining us wherever you have done around the country and around the world it is a day that we remember those who uh, we've lost in the past and uh, a game to forget